Hey there, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. What you're seeing on the screen right now are the five positions of the altered scale, the five scale forms, the five scale shapes of the altered scale. I did a lesson a few videos ago about the altered scale, all about that, all about how to map it out on the guitar, how to listen for it, how to hear it, how to think of it as its own thing and not just a mode of the melodic minor scale. And yeah, if that doesn't make sense, any of that, if that's interesting to you, I'll put a link in the description to that video. It's a great video. But what I didn't do is I didn't talk about about how to apply it to real chord progressions. So I was saving that for a part two. So now we're gonna talk about how to use the altered scale in real chord progressions, switching off between uh, a, a comfortable chord, maybe a different sound, a normal scale, a major scale, um, and then an altered chord. Because in real music, that's how it works. It comes up as a bar at a time or even two beats at a time. So there's a specific way to work on this that is super, super effective. And I think you'll find it interesting how I explain it. And really, you can apply this to working on any kind of improvisation where you're switching scales or switching chords or anything like that. So let's jump into that. <laughs> I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com. On this channel, I talk a ton about music theory and jazz guitar and arranging and improvisation and really just a wide variety of topics, but all designed to help us get more creative control over music, over the instrument, over the guitar, so we can express ourselves more freely. If you're new here, welcome and please subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified when I put out new lessons. So everything that we've talked about so far to do is really important, really necessary, but that up to that point mapping out and, and even improvising in every scale form, that is where a lot of us with our improvisation work, that's where we stop, right? We can get really comfortable and feel like we sound good even with that, but then using it in a chord progression is a kind of a different story. It's another leap that we have to take because especially something like this, the altered scale, altered chords, they often come up in chord progressions as like one bar at a time or even two beats at a time. And an, another use of this, and you know, when something is an altered chord, yes, of course we know, cool, altered scale is going to work. But another use for this to really apply it to things is that you can alter a dominant seventh chord anytime, right? Any normal dominant seventh chord, you can just treat it as altered to get a little bit of an outside, uh, more dissonant sound, even for just a couple beats, and then go back to um, the consonants or the the tonality or the chord tones of the actual chord or whatever. So um, that is that's the thing that we want to kind of be working towards. And in order to really use it in real music, we need to practice it in a way where we're switching between something that we're comfortable with and then to the new thing that we're working on. In this case, the altered scale. So uh, that's the the next step that's going to get us. Um, through that gap that is from sounding good on it to using it in real music. So the two exercises that I recommend doing, one, I want you to just jam on a normal dominant seventh chord. So I'm gonna say C7 here. So if you're not comfortable with that, then of course we need to work on that as well, but you wanna jam on C7 or um, any dominant seventh chord for one measure, maybe nice or two measures, nice slow measure, maybe one, two, three, four, and then for one measure of the altered scale. So you're treating it as C dominant seven from like a C mixolydian scale to C altered for one measure at a time. Notice how hard it is, right? If we can't do that, we're not gonna be able to use it in music, but it's, it's quite tricky and especially tricky to make it uh, feel expressive for us, but at first, don't worry about if it sounds good or any of that stuff. Just work on, can I switch my view, my perspective, sense of the fretboard? Can I switch to the different collection of notes that I'm trying to work on? So C7, one, two, three, four, altered. C7, altered. Regular. Altered. So uh, it's tricky. And what I want to say here is if that's, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard if we haven't done that before. So, you know, if you really want to simplify it, and I often do this and recommend that one practices this way, 
is to look at two strings at a time. So I'm gonna look at these two strings, uh, string four and three. So here are the notes of a regular C mixolydian. And then here are the notes of C altered on those same two strings in the same position area. That is really fun. Actually, what I find most of the time happens is we start phrasing in a way that's more musical when we limit our notes like that. So um, hard to talk while I'm playing it at the same time, but that's going to be really cool. You're going to actually feel like if you do that exercise and then go kind of work on a improvisation over chord changes, a tune that you know or that you've been working on or your actual soloing, um, I think you're going to find that it's almost going to just happen, right? Because you've actually been working on, oh, if I'm on C7 or if I'm on whatever dominant seventh chord that I'm used to, what if I just alter that for two beats or for a measure at a time or when it comes around this time? So I think you'll find that really, uh, really handy to get you to that step of actually using it. And the other way to do it is to, you can come up with your own ways as well, but the other way I recommend is maybe um, think of like C major seven, think of a tonic major seven chord, and then play the altered five chord from it. So we could do C major seven here for one measure, um, and then altered G7. C major seven. C major seven. G altered. So I hope you uh, kind of see the effectiveness of that. It's a completely different experience than just kind of jamming in that scale form over a single chord for a long time, which is necessary at first to kind of see the structures and jam with it. So I find that to finding the right exercise is as much of a kind of an art sometimes as, as what we're playing. It, we want to devise something that gets us really that result that we want. I talk a lot about that. I did a couple videos ago, I did a practice strategy, kind of the, sci the cognitive science of effective practicing where I talk about some of that problem solving. I'll put a link to that video in the description. One more thing about scales, and that's that I always recommend with every scale that we learn that we make sure we can do uh, a few melodic patterns with it, especially a melodic thirds pattern is always the first one that I recommend. <laughs> So that's playing that first scale form out of those five with a melodic thirds pattern where you're going up a third, then down one, then up a third from there and down one and, and so on. So I always, I always recommend doing that. So I created a little download PDF sheet of the top three pentatonic scale melodic patterns to work on improvising with. Since the pentatonic scale is so fun to improvise with and so common, I kind of put them into that format. but. Uh, Two of those can be applied to any scale. And so I have a free uh, download link for that in the description if you want to get it so you have kind of a little exercise sheet in front of you, which is super fun and helpful for our improvisations. So they don't just sound like scales uh, going up and down when we try to solo, they can be a little more melodic. Mm -hmm. 